What is a race condition? This is one of the most important interview related question from multithreading. With this question, interviewer wants to check your understanding of thread synchronization. So now let us understand what it really means and then we will see how it can be avoided. Suppose there is a shared resource and we have multiple threads trying to access and update that shared resource. A race condition is a situation where those threads compete for access of the same shared resource concurrently. This resource can be a variable, an object or any other data element that multiple threads can modify. Race conditions are the kind of concurrency issues that can be very tricky to debug because they often manifest only under some specific timing conditions. They can lead to program crashes, incorrect results and other unpredictable behaviors as well. Now imagine two threads, thread A and thread B, both are trying to increment a count variable. If the increment operation isn't properly synchronized, the final value of count might be incorrect due to the race between these two threads to update the value. Let us understand a race condition with a complete example in Java. In our example, we will have a count variable that is shared between two threads, thread 1 and thread 2. Both threads will increment the count variable in a loop 10,000 times. Because the increment operation, which is count plus plus, is not atomic, there is a possibility of race condition occurring. Why count plus plus is not an atomic operation? Count plus plus is actually a three step operation. First step is to read the value from memory for the count variable. In the second step, the red value will be incremented. And in the third and last step, the incremented value will be written back to the memory. So there is a high possibility that context switch can happen between any of these multi-step operations which can lead to the incorrect data updates. Now let us try to understand the code where this situation can occur. Now this is our race condition demo class. Here we have one shared resource which is a count variable and we have initialized its value to zero. In our main method we have one runnable task defined which is increment count. So what it does, it has a for loop which will run 10,000 times and increase the value of count variable. After that we are creating two threads, thread A and thread B and we are using the same runnable increment count. So what it will do, the thread A will increment the count value at 10,000 and thread B will also do an increment of 10,000 in the count variable. And after that, we are starting both the threads together and in the end we need to wait for both the threads to complete and to do that we are using join method so we are applying join on both the threads and once both the threads completed their execution and in the end we are printing the actual count value now in such scenarios where the access of this shared variable is not synchronized there is a high probability that a race condition might occur and that can result in unpredictable outputs. Now let us understand the flow of this code. Now suppose thread1 starts its execution first and gets the CPU time. So thread1 reads the current value of count variable, let us say 0. Now before thread1 can update the count, it is preempted by the scheduler and thread2 is given CPU time. Now thread2 also read the current value of count variable which is still 0 because thread1 hasn't updated it yet. Now thread2 increments the count variable and writes the updated value 1 back to the memory. Now thread1 resumes its execution unaware about that the value of the count has been changed because it has already read the value which was 0 and it incremented that value from 0 to 1 again and updates the final value 1. As a result, both threads incremented the count variable by 1, leading to the final value of 1 instead of 2. So in this way, we can see one update got missed. So if we take in our example, where we are trying to increment the value of count by 10,000 per thread, so by end of both the for loops, count value is expected to be 20,000. But there are high chances that the actual result will be different. Now let me just execute this code and show you the output. So here you can see the actual value is different from the expected value. 
and this actual value will be different every time because we don't know how many times the updates will be missed due to the context switching. Let me just try to execute it multiple times so that we can see how the value is different every time. So now we know that we have an issue. Now the question is how we can fix it. To fix this issue, we need to make sure that the update operation is properly synchronized. Now let us explore some common approaches to fix this issue. The first approach is synchronization of update operation using synchronized keyword. That will ensure only single thread updating the value of count at one time. This ensures that only one thread can execute the synchronized block at a time, preventing concurrent access to the shared resource. So here you can see the issue is fixed now as no updates are getting missed and we are getting the final count as 20,000. If you want to learn more about synchronization in detail, I have already covered it in a separate video. You can check it out from the top right corner of your screen. The second approach is using locks which are available in Java. So here first we will acquire the log, then update the count value and in the end release the log. So here in our runnable task, what we are doing just before updating the count value, we are acquiring a lock. A lock here is a type of re-entrant lock. So in this, first we will get the lock. So once we acquire the lock, whatever logic or code is written after that, that will be synchronized. That means the other threads will not be able to execute that code. So in that way, the count plus plus operation is synchronized using locking. The reentrant lock provides more flexibility and features compared to synchronized block, such as we can have condition variables and fairness policies defined as well. Let me again just execute it to show you that now we are getting 20,000 as an output. If you want to learn more about locks in detail, I have already covered that also in a separate video. You can check it out from the top right corner of your screen. Okay, now let us move to the third and the most elegant approach that we can adopt for fixing such issues. That approach is using atomic operations. So in this as our shared resource was integer, so we will be using atomic integer in this case. Java provides a number of atomic data types which we can use in our application itself if we want to adopt for atomic operations. So the package is Java Util Concurrent Atomic. Atomic Integer provides atomic increment operations that ensures thread safety updates without needing of explicit synchronization. So here you can see we have this atomic integer which we are initializing to the value zero and in our runnable task you can see we neither we are using any locks nor we are using any synchronized blocks. So we are just using count dot increment and get. This atomic integer will take care of synchronization automatically. So that is the only change that we need to do. Let me just execute it once to show you that this fix is also working. So here you can see we are receiving the count value as 20,000. So if you want to learn more about atomic operations in detail, I have already covered it in a separate video. You can check it out from the top right corner of your screen. Now we have covered what is a race condition, how it occurs and what are different common ways to fix that, how we can avoid it in our code. Now it's up to you to choose the approach that best suits your application's requirement and complexity. Each method has its own advantages and may be more suitable depending on specific context of your scenario. I hope you found this video useful. If so, don't forget to give us a like and share it with your friends. In the next video, we will cover one more important interview topic which is deadlocks. Once again, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy coding.